Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to another Supreme Commander epic. That's right, it's that time of the month when things last just a little bit longer than normal. So if you haven't got time to watch today's cast now, do feel free to drop it in your watch later playlist and come back to it when you do have the time. But for those of you that are staying, fantastic to have you guys here. Appreciate your support. What have I got for you today? Well, it's custom 4v4 pro level Saturns. And the best news is there's no news, so we can go straight to that action right now. I'm ready, you guys are ready, and the players so sure as hell ready so let's go on over to the game zone and see how they're going to get on ching ka ching the old familiar side of sentence here we are we'll call this team one at the top and this team two down here at the bottom going first for team one rear guard air position in lurid green it's you going cybrin opening first land over at the beaches team member number two for team one we have the wheelie, otherwise known as farms. There he is, going double first air in Spetsnaz Green, going UEF. That's interesting. Obviously, you want an early air factory so you can grab your side islands, but I don't often see the uh, double air opening. I'd like to know if there's some meta there, guys. Jump it in the comment section below if you'd be so so kind. I always do like to check those out when you have opinions. Over to the causeway now, team member number three for team one. It's either Kisato or Chisato. Uh, or Kisato or Trasato, depending on whatever accent. I, you know what? It's going to be Kisato. That's how we're going to go with the day. Oh, and he's going land all day, going Cybrin in baby pink, so it would seem. And last but not least, up here at the beach, uh, it's somebody who just likes to make my life difficult, quite frankly. There it is. It's his sense of humor, not mine. But you know what? We're going to call him Theatred, because if you're going to give me an out by not capitalizing the R, I'm going to jump at that chance. So there it is. It's Theatred going Aeon in Burgundy Red, opening first land, second air. So there it is. Team 2 now, rear guard air position to begin with, because let's stick with tradition. It's Nori in Lurid Green going UEF opening first land. Over at the cliffs for Team 2 in Electric Blue, we have Foley, our first Seraphim of the day, going first land, second air. At the causeway, and already leaving his base to make a push towards the middle, it's Esperanto, another Aeon, this time in Baby Blue, going land all day, as you would expect. And last but not least, down here at the beach for Team 2, he's also left his base. Looks like he's going up to join Esperanto in the middle. It's Protect. He's going Seraphim in Ferrari Red, opening first and land second air. So there we have it. Game quality at 94% today. We're pretty darn happy with that balance for a custom game well done to all the players involved highest rated player today the people to watch out for the wheelie over at the cliffs for team one <clears throat> excuse me and for team two we have foley who's at 2400 and then 2500 respectively if i didn't say that already for the wheelie so they are the top rated players but everybody else is 2000 all over with the exception of their who's on 1800 so it's a pretty high rated game all round expect escalatory things to happen quickly in this one acu is pushing in towards the middle for team one and team two we've also got backup acus moving in from both of the beach positions so real sense of the meta that's pretty ingrained into these players who play this game type regularly we've got our first transport out for our cliff players and uh, immediately getting to work on so i'm guessing he can start working on the engineers having produced the transport from that factory. It makes no difference whether it's an air or land factory, but he can spit the air transport out of one and get to work on interceptors to cover that bad boy straight away. So that's probably the concern with going double first air, I'm guessing. Do let me know if I have that one right, though, guys. Air transport away also for Foley. No hostile inbound bombers from Team 1 looking to make that drop zone difficult for him. So I think both of these teams are going to have no problems securing their side islands. No early air incursions by any super aggressive players. Uh, Kisato going for the first Salem. And then I think we, a long time ago, we established the idea that if you go for all the Salems first, that's actually less efficient than going for all of the tanks first. But I don't know if there's some even more efficient method whereby you can alternate between some of the tanks and the Salems. But uh, we'll see how this one works out. We'll drop back in on those guys in just a moment. We scroll out a little bit. We can see Protect and Thetad coming in hot on their heels. Thetad just a little bit closer 
towards the middle than his mirror position on team two we've also got the inevitable stream of t1 spam moving in for both kisato there and esperanto and what's this moving in as well one engineer being airdropped in from the wheelie having taken the side island with that transport he's now using it to airlift one unit of built capacity to the front i'm guessing to get his share of the reclaim up front it could possibly uh, be to lay down any defenses and help his teammate no he's just concerned with the mass at this point and uh, we'll take a look in just a second to see who or which team is faring better on that front as the last big wrecks get hoovered up in this initial opening reclaim exercise as descending into absolute chaos in the center of the causeway here Bertrand still looking pretty healthy on about 8,800. Esperanto and Kisato, the original two ACUs, not looking quite so healthy. Kisato down to 6,000, well, just basically 6,000 now, and falling going sub 6,000 as Protect continues to lay into him. Esperanto gets a whole horde of Mantis locked onto his chassis, and he is down to 5,300 hit points and still taking damage but those mantis look like they're backing away now we're starting to see some potential lines being drawn between these two teams Thetard absorbing some of the extra damage there Kisato then taking his turn in front Kisato down to 4,500 Esperanto down sub 4,000 now and more pressure being brought to bear in terms of T1 spam all the time we've got a line of light artillery in here definitely needs to avoid that into the red now esperanto on 2500 hit points protect takes the lead as his namesake suggests he's on about 7100 moves in front to protect esperanto from some of that inbound fire obviously there's a little bit of a mobility advantage here for esperanto with his floaty floaty naughty naughty his auroras can move on and off the causeway at will a little bit more restricted play for the Cybrin up here, Kisato. All of these Medusas very much landlocked like a true lubber. What is the origin of a lubber exactly? Something to do with naval business. First naval yards now in play. Speaking of navy, one put down and flourishing for protect. Do we have... Oh, I was going to say... I was like, the wheelie is off the boil a little bit on naval production, but of course, secret option number two, and it's becoming more and more popular these days. Forget putting naval yards, or at least starting with naval yards, by the cliffs. No, put them down by the side island. It affords extra protection for that more vulnerable position, and also it's a closer, slightly closer reinforcement point for any inbound kerfuffles which are going to generate in that bottom pond. We've also got one naval yard in place, soon to be a second one over here for Foley. <clears throat> and a prospective line of new ones going up for Thetard. He's got one operational one already. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine queued up. That's a lot of T1 naval yards. The first few upgrades are almost complete and Esperanto's gone for gun Kisato's gone for T2 offense versus defense it would seem and uh, we're going straight for a sensor suite after that as well for Esperanto not sure offhand without checking of the eco differentials there I think, uh, well, I would imagine Sensor Suite to cost considerably less than some of the others. It's taking a while to complete, though, so maybe not. Let's have a look at which team did better in terms of reclaim. Well, it's Team 1 actually came out ahead. It's 26k to 23k. Kisato pulled in a full 10k reclaim. And Esperanto pulled in only a paltry 6.6. .6. Protect got in 4.9k. And Thetard got in 4.2. So overall, a definite win on that initial encounter in the center. Kisata now looking to lock down the center of that causeway, throwing down defensive emplacements. 
Cerberus turrets. There's the shield gen. Looks like he's going to go for two or three more PDs before he starts work on that shield gen. Esperanto would love to be able to bash this down and prevent this from going up. But you know what? He's gone offensive and he's now going double gun. Oh, and he cancelled the sensor suite. Interesting. So that's wasted resources there. Maybe that was a misclick. Perhaps he said something about it in chat, or maybe he's just hoping nobody else noticed. But he's going double gun. He's going to go offensive, but he's also a little bit low on HP. So probably going to find it difficult to crack this nut up here. Going to have a lot of cyber and point defense. Going to have at least one basic shield there by the time he's ready to engage it. Might even have been upgraded before he gets there, but still... Aeon Sniper Com, not to be sniffed at. We've seen the damage they can inflict many, many times. What's going on up here? T1 Bomber harassing you in the backfield. Finding a whole bunch of vulnerable engineers clumped up around that T2 reactor. He's actually, well, up until the point of that emergent single ASF, he had relative control of the skies there, but a quick upgrade to T3 that ASF out into play and prevent that T prevented that T1 bomber from doing any further damage. Are we at Tech 3 for Nori? Yes, we are. <clears throat> Look at these players matching each other step for step, as you would expect for 2,000 rated players. These are not your average newbies. And Esperanto actually leaving the causeway now, along with a whole bunch of blazes so he went t2 land stuck with the floaty floaty to give himself some options here on the causeway floating a little bit too close to danger kisato did go for an upgrade on that shield in fact that might be upgraded once and actually working towards the third upgrade Esperanto brings his commander back. Where is he heading with these blazers? A couple of frigates in the bottom pond belonging to his teammate over here. Protect. Protect, who's also got uh, an ASF or two. Or is that actually... No, that looks like it might have been handed over. I'm not seeing any T3 air production facilities. That would be a departure from the norm. It looks like Nori just handling a portion of the ASF count and then offloading one or two to his teammate for personal use. Blazers catching up with a few frigates over here. They've got their own shield coverage as well, which is nice to have if you can get it. Two new naval yards have gone up next to the entrance to the cliffs right at the side of the map there but of course there's the other danger zone over here three more naval yards churning out frigates coming up to 13 minutes in generated eco team one ever so slightly ahead it's 509 to 483 they're up 207k versus 193k overall and they're up 10k in terms of reclaim so Definite advantage so far for Team 1. ASF's for you. Hungry for some kills. Spot some out-of-date antiquated technology in those T1 interceptors. Also out of fuel. Take the opportunity to shoot those puppies down. Protect and Esperanto turn up just outside the harbour here. For the wheelie with all these frigates and blazers. Are they going to send them in or what? Ah, control transferred over from Esperanto over to protect. Ah, they look like they're going hunting for more potential shipyards up here, but there aren't much. We have, of course, the odd mass extractor on the cliff edge. Not going to be able to reach very far inland. I don't think they, even if they park there, I don't think you could reach that T3 mechs with frigates. Having
having seen that move. The wheelie is going to take the opportunity to push out with his frigates and chop down some of these auroras and blazes on their way out. Costly little uh, error there, potentially, from Team 2, but this is going better for Team 2. Top Pond sees Foley bearing down on Thetard's naval base. He's got enough units to lock Thetard out of Top Pond yet. All T1 vessels, but with some blazes thrown into the mix. We've got a little stream of T1 bombers moving in as well. Another group of blazes moving up from the causeway from Esperanto. We might see control transferred over once again. Another upgrade for Esperanto's comm, who's still not looking particularly healthy. I think it has to be said. 4,000 hit points, just shy. Still has that double gun. Of course, we saw, it, uh, saw him cancel that sensor suite upgrade earlier on. in all, Causeway play seems to be drifting slightly for the moment in favour of Team 1. Eco-wise seems to be going that way as well. 780 now versus 627. 322k versus 291k. T1 bombers offloading their payload. T2 engineers in here able to absorb one or two of those bombs, but not many more than that. There to trying to get a new line of mass T1 naval yards in play, but engineers getting slaughtered by some of the frigates from Foley. One lone engineer over here is just begging for that T1 bomber to notice it, but he doesn't. Sails on past instead. The wheelie and protect being somewhat cagey of each other in this bottom pond. The wheelie looking now maybe to consolidate his forces, having brought them all the way over to the causeway and now bringing them back as a renewed threat surges up from Protect's naval base down here. Let's just have a quick look at ASF numbers. We've got 24 air superiority fighters for you. How's Nori doing? 34, so a slight advantage in ASF numbers for Team 2. So they're winning on paper somewhere at least. Look at this. Where did all these blazes come through? That They must have come up. We saw them moving up the side of the causeway here. They must have come through here, knocked out these mexes, sailed past the base, or floated past the base. They're going to go straight in here. Engineers hurriedly tried to get some defences in play, but that doesn't work. Now there's a T3 mech here belonging to Theta that looks like it might go down unless there's some kind of gunship or bomber reprieve. See a T1 bomber or a few of them now being sent in by you, but that's not going to save that T3 mech. Theta, who's already... Actually, he's not short stacking. Esperanto short stacking on 66, but that takes him down to 75 mass per tick, the loss of that mech. But look at this, now the edge, the top edge, the other set of cliffs on the map, that's now under threat by another massive blaze attack. Esperanto really getting his money worth with these T2 hover tanks right now. Our first experimentals out, what's that? That would be a monkey lord constructed at the main base of Kisato. That could be interesting. Esperanto currently anchored to the spot down here, getting what exactly he's got personal shield already hard to tell exactly starting heavy shield so he's not transferring to anything else that will be a little bit uh, more of a sturdy commander and he's going to need it with a monkey lord coming his way checking back up on the top cliffs you can see Esperanto has wiped out those mexes. Thetard now short stacking by a huge margin, putting out just a meagre eight mass per tick. Down to seven now, and now down to two. As his main base completely capitulates to all of this sea-based firepower from Foley, who's wiped out all of these naval yards. And now the main base 
is basically kaput as well. Functional T2 air headquarters, but uh, theatred ostensibly, for the time being at least, more or less out of the game. He's hoovering up wrecks of his old mass extractors. Not the best situation. Monkey Lord has reached the front, front line of Kisato's forward base, which is currently contending with frigate spam and the odd destroyer as well, which is moving up on these factories. The shield gen has capitulated. And the Monkey Lord presses on, now flanked by all manner of rhinoage sorted other T2 units. We've got a banger in there for a little bit of coverage from potential gunship attack. Esperanto now with his heavy shield and double gun. Still only 6,500 HP on the armor though. He's got a lot of asylums to cover that commander but still you're not going to want to get into combat directly with that monkey lord. I wouldn't imagine. Maybe he will. Maybe he's feeling lucky with that many shield gens behind him with the double gun com. Ooh, microwave laser opens up on that Aeon Commander income, all of the Silums, they seem to afford him some protection for a minute or two, but look at the hit points shed off that Monkey Lord. Bang! Esperanto gets a rank in veterancy for his trouble, and not only is the threat down, he's now looking significantly more sturdy than he did a moment ago, and now all of this T2 spam that followed down that Monkey Lord that now has to turn tail and run. That's a fantastic outcome for Esperanto. Didn't even look like he was in jeopardy. Shield gen, or the heavy shield, was depleted. But uh, too many asylums covering that commander. Wasn't even worried. Time to revive Eco, he says in local global chat. And you can see that Theatred has transferred what's left of his old base structures over to Kisato. Kisato pulling in about 330 mass. Theatred putting in one mass just from that generator on board the commander. Such a paltry amount. Total eco still favoring Team 1 though. Generated mass as well 1.2k versus 1.1k and team one up by 704k to 622 reclaim should be a nice boost from that monkey lord though you can see team two rapidly catching up on that front as they scoopy scoopy all of that delicious cybrin charred cybrin tech Thing tastes quite as good as a socialist barbecue. That's not a barbecue hanging out with the socialist, that's what you cook with the socialist. God, I'm worse than barbecue with the socialists. <laughs> don't get political guile, they don't like that. Sorry, apologies. Destroyers pulling back from the front. I have to say, with the exception of this one battle cruiser, he really looks like he's, although he's making progress, it actually looks like he's lower on numbers. But of course, that Neptune with its massive iron cannons just hoovering up protects frigates. And it is mostly frigate spam. We've got the odd destroyer in here, but nothing really to write home about. And look at this. With the demise of that forward base, Esperanto, emboldened by his victory against the Monkey Lord, is just on the rampage now with that Rambo Com. He's got all of this mobile shield coverage to afford him protection, and despite an outrageous amount of Cerberus turrets, he continues to advance, seemingly completely unperturbed. Kisato's moved back up here with his command to get a second row of point defense in. Esperanto doesn't care, moving in, casually absorbing fire, overcharging as he goes. Personal heavy shield tanking a lot of it. The asylums have been depleted though. Is this base going to hold? I can't believe it. Looked like it was going to go down there for a minute, but it might just hold. 
shield on just over half health and about two-thirds depleted. It's also got a lot of inbound cruise missile fire coming from the Seraphim cruisers up here. Usually when you're in this position on the causeway, it's only a matter of time. GG? Who's putting out GG's already? It's a little bit early at 24 minutes from this position. You doesn't like the look of things. I mean, it, uh, it doesn't look great. The wheelie is making progress in the bottom pond. Has still got a healthy looking Neptune class battle cruiser. Might be about to take down all of these naval yards, although there is a battleship there. It's going to outlive what Neptune has. Gold swords locked onto it. That's not going to make it back to base. There's another wave of vessels up here, though. So for the time being, Protect holds on to his main base and his naval position, but it is only delaying the inevitable, I think. But meanwhile, look at the difference. Thetid, obviously, his base capitulated a long time ago. Had to hand what was left over to Kisato. We've already got Seraphim land factories spewing out T1 spam here for Foley. This is a problem for Kisato, who's actually backing away from his main base now. As potential land threat in behind his main base. His forward base is getting pummeled by cruise missile fire. Team 2 still just behind in terms of eco, but tactically speaking, they are in the ascendancy right now. Esperanto... Ooh looking a little bit lonely up front now his horde of shield gens and flak and various other units that accompanied his comm up the causeway have been destroyed now he's just stalwartly facing down all of this point defense he probably doesn't want to stand there though that shield gen working overtime move pings going down on that comm don't often see this love this gutsy play. Well, I love it when it works. Otherwise, we'd all be very critical of him walking headfirst into danger like this. But for the moment, he's judging it perfectly. He's looking like he's going to overextend himself, but he never seems to, or hasn't so far. Second set of land factories going down now for Foley a little bit further up. Yu's going to try and contain this with a renegade gunship raid. Take down the engineer, for goodness sake. Let him build more. It's a two-second job for one gunship. That little threat shut down. And the forward base, or the forward base is, we should say, of Kisato down as well. Just the main base remaining. A main base that Esperanto happy to take on all by himself with the assistance though I suppose of cruise missile fire coming in from the top pond needs to be careful here wave of rhinos brought out to engage the comm that heavy shield charging back up a lot of damage to those tanks he's Fully five-star comm, so no more chunks of hit points. Going to be flying back onto that commander to save him if he gets in serious trouble. So perhaps needs to be a little bit more, a little bit more circumspect with his play, a little bit more careful. This is nice to see. You don't often people use see people using this functionality here. Actual screenshots in the chat. Scouts, assist, please. asking for assistance to complete the gun upgrade on his commander. That's the second gun upgrade. That will be a useful tool right now to try and keep this beach, uh, this base, this beach section secure. Tripping over my words again. Ah, yes. That would be a chicken, though. Moving right up the causeway. Kisato's base 
not longed for this world, I think it's fair to say. Moving into range of that forward shield gen, opening up. And that, as they say, is that. There's no stopping Bernard. Bernard and his mighty cannons. And face charging plasma ball headers. That is the ostensibly the end of Kisato's forward base. He's set up a new one over here though, and I like this double quantum gateway setup he's got going on. Nearly has a bug. That could be useful, although looking at ASF numbers, we've got 83, I think that is, for you on team one. Nori looks like he's got an awful lot. He's got three. 166 so I don't know how useful that bug's going to be once it completes Looking for Foley to point out Theotard's Con that's just rolling up there taking down these land factories forgot about the chicken <laughs> boom our first ejection on the nose pretty much of half an hour into this game Theotard gone along with his top beach position and that chicken somewhere in that nuclear fire still very healthy indeed 67,000 hit points left on board that experimental no signs of stopping gunships might cause a problem temporarily though as soon as these ASFs get in the mix those gunships will no longer be a problem I think Dota gets a bit confused about where it's going in life. Eventually turns tail and runs. There is the counter-attack of Nori's massive air force. Suicide T1 bombers brought in from you trying anything to make this. The Thota shed some of its HP. How is Farms getting on? Farms not quite in control of the bottom pond yet. He's getting close, but the question is, has too much time elapsed? He's got some assistance from support commanders down here from Kisato. Generated eco-wise, apart from Esperanto. Why is Esperanto putting out so little? Esperanto has transferred his whole base under over attack. to Foley. So he's putting out one, but... Kisato having lost his main base. He's still putting out a decent amount of mass considering that fact. All coming from support commanders pretty much. He's down to about 200 mass. Large bug does complete. Being brought to bear now against that Ithota along with a whole load of renegade gunships and T1 bombers from you. There's the counter response from Nori. Surely that's the end of the bug. Oh, look, and Esperanto still on the warpath here. That'll be why he's transferred everything over to Foley. It's all about inflicting damage right now. With that beefy commander standing out in front of bank upon bank of Cerberus turret. Chopping it down. And somehow managing to escape with his life intact. He manage it this time though. He's about to go into the red. Sub 4,000 hit points. Sub 3,000. Just drifts out of range again. Calling it perfectly every time so far. But will his luck continue to hold? Three. Faf's player career in game ends in failure. Such tactics are used typically. It's only a matter of time. That suggests that's the aim. Go aggressive, go suicidal. It's not about long term macro anymore for him. He's transferred everything over to Foley. Top rated player on Team 2 can handle all of that business. He's going for blood and glory. But the eradication, the final eradication of Protects fleet force, naval positions, that is complete. And now the bombardment of the main base begins. Trying desperately to slow it up with as much T1 floaty floaty naughty naughty spam as they can. 
Ras Crusher. Not sure exactly how many Rasses he's crushed. So far, zero. There's only been one death, and I went to the Afota and quote. <laughs> so I'm not sure of the exact meaning behind that. Still, 5,200 hit points. Dodging some inbound fire from the north here, thanks to this hillock that he's hiding behind. The Athota, which he's been travelling with, is about done. Some 5,000 hit points left on him. Down to 4,000. But the last couple of Cerberus turrets in the area are about to go down. But there is surely the demise, at least, of both the Experimental and the Com here. That is Thota with 3,000 hit points. The Monkey Lord's about to get in range. It'll take some damage. Nothing to worry about. There's the end of the Ithota. Esperanto making a run for it now. Trying to kill as many structures as he can before he gets incinerated. Feeling that's not far away as he rolls over the brow of the hill. Fires an overcharge into the experimental. That shield gen holding up pretty well for a while. Did get him down to 11,000 hit points before he went pop. But uh, it was not to be. Still, glorious charge right up the middle. Inflicted loads of damage. Would you just look at this situation? It's looking pretty dire for Team 1 right now. Loads of Zooey spam being brought into the center. Yet to see the land incursion get underway for Team 1 over here. At the beach section, Team 2's territory. You know it's coming, but uh, time is of the essence. Oh, look! A Mavor, though. Would you just look at that? That could cause some serious problems. <clears throat> Kasato is up to 400 mass now. He was in the 200s last time we checked. Thanks to this dual quantum gateway setup assisted with hives he's just churning out these ras preset support commanders how many has he got now it looks like he's got quite a lot he's got 29 ras preset support commanders so busy transitioning his eco to a mobile support commander based model always a good option for late game Tele defense would be cool, says Esperanto. They do have two saucy Cybrans on Team 1. Never know when they're going to show up in your base. Start setting fire th to things like the dirty pyromaniacs they are. That Mavor, 7,500 hit points out of 8,000. And a nuke out of somewhere. It's out of Foley's main base. Big old freeze frame there. Apologies for that. Every now and again, my computer gets indigestion. Now, where is that headed? Is that going central or is it going deep? It's not actually that much up here in the way of PGEN's air factories. We've got a, a decent little clump but not the enormous sprawling things you often see come 30 minutes into a sentence game well, he's gone short he's gone central it's tore a ruddy great hole in the infrastructure down here now with that nuke and that Mavor should be online right about now indeed it is the mighty tool trains and fires which poor respondent is going to feel the wrath first of all I wonder I would imagine maybe or shells would want to come landing in here we do have a anti-nuke silo back here so that might be a priority target 
finally we have the first factories going up on the beach down here for the wheelie and team one we've also got a lot of build capacity down here interestingly from Chisato. Naval shells complete their travel connect perfectly with those P gens. Look at that. This whole rear base is now in severe trouble. I miss the old Mavor where firing randomness just wasn't a thing. It just hit perfectly wherever it wanted to go. It was perhaps a little bit OP. Just to just be able to pick off commanders on the run. <laughs> Some shells dropping at the wheelies base. Going after various structures. Kisato with the huge jump in eco now. Look at this. He's up to 780 and now 850. That must be reclaim related. He's still churning out support commanders. Strategic launch Look how detected. fast they build with this many hives assisting them. Sato absolutely charging right now. He's up over 800. We've got another nuke in the air. This one is... We've got a dual, dual nuke situation over here. We do, I think. Foley's got one nuke launcher there. One there. I thought there was another one maybe more central. Anti-nukes over here. <coughs> Travelling over to the beach now. Nothing Strategic to stop that, detected. so the wheelie's going to lose his core mass and three reactors. Is that his air HQ as well? Looked like it might have been. It was certainly working on some broadswords by the looks of things. Another nuke out for Foley. We've got multiple nukes coming out from Team 2 now. We have a operational Mavor. is not looking great right now for Team 1. Protect still with a presence right on the corner edge over here. Nuke's gone for the side island. Nothing to stop that. That's another hit to the wheelie. Petty recriminations going off in chat between members on Team 1. Always fun to see. Kisato is now up to 1.1k. And what's he done? He's dropped back and he's built a couple of quantum gateways and he's built the hives and he's been able to keep this unmolested. There's been an attack ping on it, so I'm guessing that's someone on Team 2 telling uh, Nori to train his either the nukes for Foley or Nori's Mavor on it, and yeah, I concur quite frankly, because that's ridiculous. He was on 100 mass after his bases got nuked over here. When I say nuked, not nuked by missiles, but just run over essentially by Ithota's by Esperanto's com and by all of that navy from Foley sitting in the top pond there. And he moved, he set up shop, and just started churning out RAS support commanders. What are we up to now? Up to 80. He has 80 RAS preset support commanders. Completely mobile, spread out economy. Strategic That's incredibly launch, hard to deal with. Yes, you should always build support commanders. Do you know what? I'm wondering if it wouldn't actually be just a good general meta. <clears throat> Excuse me. Get someone like the beach player. You're probably going to lose the top pond against your cliff opponent if you're the beach. So just transfer that over to the causeway player once you're set up. Move back here and start doing this. Oh, it's, it's gone now, but start doing what was there. <laughs> Finally, the no... <laughs> Mayfor. 
targets the overwhelming threat, but we've still got more gateways down here. That's also a thing. He's just gone mass support Strategic commander. Detected. Question is, can Team 2 kill enough of this to get on top of this rapidly deteriorating situation with Kisato and his eco. I mean, they might just not be aware of how bad things are. Strategic launch That's the detected. view from Team 2, after all. They don't know how many support commanders are around here. They haven't got proper reads on anything because of all of the electronic interference around here. All of these dirty cybern vessels. Counter nukes coming launch, in in the detected. opposite direction over here from strategic missile submarines belonging to Kisato. So Kisato's got a hell of a lot of nuke subs here. And he's got a huge income, so he's going to be able to nuke spam very effectively. That's exactly what he's doing, targeting the causeway bases belonging to Foley for the time being. Going a little bit deeper. Still, Mavor shells traversing the map, raining down on all manners of targets. But the problem is, this phase of the game, infrastructure is so spread out, and of course, this support commander situation, the Mavor just isn't going to help you with that. Yolana Os might. If they've correctly identified how much of a problem pink is going to be. If they can keep that experimental nuke launcher alive and just start blanketing the bottom pond with it. Land a couple over here, that would certainly help. But my guess is they have no idea. They probably think they're still on top. They have no idea the situation they're in. Look at this. Team 1 is outperforming Team 2 in Eco 2 to 1 right now. It's 2k per tick versus 1k. They are up over a million mass, or almost a million mass in total mass accrued. That is Strategic situation critical and rather untenable, that has to be said. Nori over here. The chunky looking commander, personal shield, RAS, hugging the Mavor, spamming up nuke Strategic silos, or sorry, anti nuke detected. silos. Oh, that was a massive volley of nukes. Foley coming up with the goods, enough anti nukes to keep his main base safe, but the next volley might get through. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. Unlucky for some, certainly for Foley, if any more of those actually make it through. How many anti nukes have we gotten here? Well, I saw at least two or three. We've got two strategic defense silos there and two more down there, so that's quite a lot of them. That one is loaded. That one's loaded. So is that, and so is that. So he's got at least four. There might be more SMDs that I've missed. Maybe. What on earth? Where did that GC come from? Was there a saucy little sacrificial build by Foley at the top of the screen? Quite potentially... GC out of nowhere into the backfield. You is countering with more labs than you're likely to see in a lifetime. Strategic Streaming launch, across the terrain. Trying to chase down that massive experimental. The main base or what's left of it. There's not an awful lot left after the endless barrages from the Mavor. That Colossus, they're not particularly effective 
against Colossus, it has to be said. That might have to be the thumbnail right there. Huge quantities of tiny little troopers firing up at that massive, massive bot, but it's just the just tanking them happily. 362 kills to its name so far. Plenty more coming its way. It's got one more star in veterancy to go, so another big old chunk of HP will be flying onto its tank. That Yolana Oss. Moving up to around 70% done. Soon to be 75. Long before the next barrage of sub base nukes, I wonder. Some of them are loaded. Those are not nukes, those are sub base cruise missiles. Strategic launch detected. It is another nuke, and it's out from Foley. Going on over here, protect. He's moved his comm up. Must have airlifted it up. Answers in the comment section, guys, if you saw that uh, Colossus emerge. I mean, it might have come all the way up around the top of the screen. It was just funny to see it emerge like that. While you're down there, guys, hit the like and subscribe and help me out. Leave a comment and tell me how beautiful you are. I'm dying to know. I'm married, of course, so I have to live vicariously through others in terms of romance. Maybe that's the screenshot. That is definitely the thumbnail, I think. Finally, that Colossus getting burnt a new one does manage to come out victorious against the much weaker Monkey Lord, but the horde of labs will eventually Strategic get their launch kill. Detected. In there, there's going to be one lab that's going to be like a five-star general for that kill. <laughs> Just for landing the final shot. Another wave of nukes in towards Foley's base. There's the anti-nukes. Will there be enough? Still at least two nukes in there. Maybe even three and they're all going to connect. One would have been enough. Foley's main base in pieces. Casato still has operational quantum gateways kicking around, or at least one of them. Queuing up another one back up here again. Just the sheer number of support commanders. He's spammed up naval yards, and he's gone mobile with his air production, so he's built a whole ton of aircraft carriers. Now let's just do an ASF check to see who's got control of the skies. Uh, 186 plus 45 that are bingo on fuel there for Kisato. Nori has 244. Small advantage still with Team 2 in air numbers, but with that eco, there's no way Nori can keep Strategic up. Strategic launch detected. Yolana Os for Foley has completed. Now, is he going to be able to... I don't think he's going to be... He needs to land one in here and take out these subs. That's what he needs to do. Strategic launch. Get detected. them out of the game ASAP. Oh, more nukes inbound towards Foley's main base. Has he got strategic missile defense up here? He's strategic working on launch one. Detected. He's working on another one. Has he, he's hoovered up his nuke launchers. Maybe for Mass to finish off the experimental nuke. Oh, it's a lot of civilian casualties. Oh no. So much build capacity caught in that one. 
Foley now very light on infrastructure. Super nuke lands. Did it get the nuke subs? No, it didn't. They're all up here, but still, it's cleared out the beach pretty solidly. Strategic launch detected. Really moving his commander northwards. Oh, Protect got himself killed. We saw him move up to the beach a, a while ago. He's going to run into a monkey lord there. Just wanted a new base. Trying to set up shop on that side of things. I dropped there to billy you. Uh, then I got kill steal. <laughs> he was just moving his comm in. So the, the wheelie has gone billy nuke on that UEF comm. All about having fun at this point. And that huge horde of labs that we saw sent Strategic against the Colossus detected. now being directed Strategic southwards towards Strategic Team 2's main base. Thota Strategic stomping launch around detected. trying to protect the entrance to the causeway. Another massive volley going in different directions now from these nuke subs. Strategic launch detected. Super nuke going the other way. This is absolute carnage. Oh, a couple of bugs going to get caught in that one. Bug out, bug out. They just get out in time. A lot of Team 1's infrastructure, though, won't be so lucky down here. Strategic launch detected. Vessels lobbing cruise missiles across the causeway at various Myrmidons. I like what uh, Kisato's been doing. He's just been taking his spare commanders, locking down the pond, putting down as many SAMs as possible, making it too difficult for Nori to spend any time over the water with his fighters. Nuke inbound. Quite so many casualties this time. Strategic launch detected. Yeah, so much going on. Just trying to work out. Oh my god, that's where he's going. Trying to find the wheelies com. And he's on a transport heading deep into enemy territory, skirting the edge of the map. Move ping's gone down. In come the ASFs. Can he get his comm in the water in time? Whoa! <laughs> Just in the nick of time. Gets the comm in the water. Launches one of his billy nukes. Gets straight to work on a flare SAM site so he doesn't get torpedo bombed to death. Strategic Sensible decision. <clears throat> Trying to bring this Billy Nuke to bear against the Thota. It's the range light from the pond. Strategic launch the detected. shield. Impacts on the shield. He can hit. Commander under attack. From there, that is the range. Going through the edge of the Mavor. But it's, uh, it's so feeble. The Billy Nuke. Uh, the shield's... Just over half health each. Now we've got tactical missile defense going up against that. So he's going to drop the next one short. Take out some of these positions nearby. A few torque bombers were brought to bear against the wheelie. And Com's not at full health either. He's on about 1,400 hit points. T1 Strategic bombers brought in to detected. take out the flayers. Horde of labs reaching their way down into enemy territory now and look at these bugs two four six of them that is a massive infestation if ever i've seen one with their own 
own personal escort. Nori's going to have to get involved with this fight in a minute. He's going to have to do something about these bugs. Of course, if he loses the air fight, which he probably will do if he's concerned with shooting down these gunships as well. He's unlikely to get all of those gunships. There's more ASFs being added to the pile from Kisato all the time. He's up to 1.3k now. Even use up to 1k. It's 2.4k versus 678 mass per tick in favour of Team 1. The reversal in fortune in this game has been extraordinary. Driven, of course, by the support commander spam from Kisato. Really emerging from the water, throwing down a T1 point defense, starting work on a T2, and uh, adjusting slightly. Oh, but a super nuke, that'll get you every time. <laughs> Literally almost landed on his head. The wheelie is down at out 57 minutes and uh, actually makes it a 2v2. really doesn't matter at this point. Labs breaching the perimeter now of Nori's main base. How many bugs are still alive? Two, four, six, seven bugs. An eighth up here, a ninth over here. Yeah, you're about to see Team 2 get broken. Strategic launch detected. Another nuke out. Where's that going? Quite the game, says you. Yes, indeed. Huge amounts of spam coming. Look at all of these factories. It's about to be significantly less. But still, there's the big air engagement kicking off. Love the changes they've made. Look at that lack of slowdown. One bug down. Bugs still intact. This lead one's badly damaged, though. That's about to fall. Two, four, six remain in this pile alone. Can they make it through to the Yolana Os and the Mavor, which is still alive after all of this time? Oh, they're dropping thick and fast now, but it's killing the shields. One's going to land on the Yolana Os. There it goes. Oh! It was actually the death, I think, of Foley or for Nori that finished it off. No, Nori's over here. It was Foley that died that killed off the Yolana Os, but it wouldn't have mattered. Look, spare ones coming in all the time. Nori left to face the fire all by his lonesome. Ah, oh, still alive, 100 hit points. No shield coverage, though. I don't even know what killed him. Maybe that was Control K. Still lists as a Control K, no matter what, I think, at the moment, anyway. But, uh, yeah, I think that might have been a, a capitulation or a giving up at the end. But let's face it. What are you going to do? You're done. Mavel was killed. Yolana Os was dead. You're all by your lonesome. Outgunned and outmatched. Wow. That was a dramatic reversal in Fortune. I cannot quite believe it. They managed, Team 2 managed to get the Mavor up. And under normal circumstances, in a normal game where there wasn't quite so much mobile economy, if it was up a little bit earlier, maybe, that could be a lit. I mean, its name is a game ender, of course. That would have been a literal game ender. But it didn't matter. They were so spread out. All of the stuff on land that could be seen, it was unimportant really, it was low order. Taking out mass points, what does it matter if they've got 80 support commanders, you know. So, fantastic play there from Team 1. They took a lick in early on, but came back strong with a fantastic ending. Hope you enjoyed it guys. Don't forget, there's more content available on the premium side of things on Patreon. Do follow the link in the description below this video or just search on Google Guile Patreon if you want to do it that way. It's only a dollar a month. You get access to Discord, lots of extra content. I think we've got some 67 casts up there for privileged access only. It's ad-free 
as well. A little extra, extra little incentive for you. Do go and check that out, guys. But until next time, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.